I think what we're seeing in the West today is a renaissance of story. I think it's easy to stereotype, and I think it's easy to say, yes, there is a character in the American West, and it's the cowboy. I think that's been very damaging, and I think that's an old story. If there's a renaissance in Western writing, I think it's because, as a people, we are recognizing what we are losing, and we are losing our land. And therefore, I think many of us are writing out of a sense of loss, um, writing out of a sense of love, writing out of a desperate attempt to preserve what remains. From my point of view, being a Westerner is, is digging in, staying put, and, and feeling a deep sense of connectedness and rootedness. I belong to a clan of one-breasted women. My mother, my grandmothers, and six aunts have all had mastectomies. Seven are dead. The two who survive have just completed rounds of chemotherapy and radiation. I've had my own problems. Two biopsies for breast cancer and a small tumor between my ribs diagnosed as a borderline malignancy. This is my family history. We are a Mormon family with roots in Utah since 1847 and only one faced breast cancer prior to 1960. Traditionally, as a group of people, Mormons have a low rate of cancer. A little over a year after mother's death, my father and I were having dinner together. Over dessert, I shared a recurring dream of mine. I told my father that for years, as long as I could remember, I saw this flash of light in the night in the desert, that this image had so permeated my being that I could not venture south without seeing it again on the horizon, illuminating buttes and mesas. You did see it. He said, saw what? The bomb, the cloud. We were driving home from Riverside, California. You were sitting on Diane's lap. We were driving north past Las Vegas. It was an hour or so before dawn when this explosion went off. We pulled over and suddenly, rising from the desert floor, we saw it clearly, this golden stemmed cloud, the mushroom. And within a few minutes, a light ash was raining on the car. I stared at my father. I thought you knew that, he said. It was a common occurrence in the 50s. It was at that moment that I realized the deceit I had been living under, children growing up in the American Southwest, drinking contaminated milk from contaminated cows, even from the contaminated breasts of their mothers, my mother, members, years later, of the clan of one-breasted women. You know, I think you, you uncover stories like this in your family history, and um, you're no longer comfortable. Um, I crossed a line, not only metaphorically, but physically. And I think that's where um, I made the, the personal t decision to commit civil disobedience with other women from Utah, with other family members, um, not only in the name of peace, but in the name of the clan of one-breasted women. And I think this is where, once again, a poetics of place, the bird refuge, a passion of the land, of the natural world, of wings and water, unknowingly gave birth to a politics of place, where we literally do stand our ground in the places that we love. That that sacred rage propels not only the writing, but our lives. Refuge is the story of the rise of Great Salt Lake during the floods of the 1980s and the demise of the Bear River Bird Refuge and also about my mother's diagnosis with cancer. I am reminded that what I adore, admire, and draw from mother is inherent in the earth. My mother's spirit can be recalled simply by placing my hands on the black hummus of mountains or the lean sands of desert. Her love, her warmth, and her breath, even her arms around me, are the waves, the wind, the sunlight, and water. Water in the American West is blood. Rivers, streams, creeks become arteries, veins, capillaries. Dam, dike, or drain any of them, and somewhere silence prevails. No water no fish, no water, no plants, no water, no life, nothing breathes. 
the land body becomes a corpse. Where there is water, the desert is verdant. There is something unnerving about my solitary travels around the northern stretches of Great Salt Lake. You stand in the throbbing silence of the Great Basin, exposed and alone. In the severity of a salt desert, I am brought down to my knees by its beauty. My imagination is fired, my heart opens and my skin burns in the passion of these moments. I will have no other gods before me. Many of the teachings within the Mormon church, I love deeply. The sense of family, the sense of community, um, the sense of accountability, the work ethic, um, prayer, all of those things are central to my life as a spiritual practice. There are other things that I don't feel comfortable with. Um, the sense of patriarchy, um, the dogma that is with any religion. It is both a blessing and a burden. And there is that shadow side. Um, and maybe that's what I mean when I talk about writing out of a broken heart. Um, it's never easy to defy convention. And I think every time a writer picks up a pen, you are breaking loyalties. Because if we tell the truth, we have to. My life is a shared life, and that is with Brooke. And we've been married 20 years. D.H. Lawrence writes, in every living thing, there is a desire for love, for the relationship of unison with the rest of things. I think of my own stream of desires, how cautious I have become with love. And when I refuse an intimate's love or hoard my spirit, or when a known landscape is bought, sold, and developed, chained or grazed to a stubble, or when a hawk is shot and hung by its feet on a barbed wire fence, my heart cannot be broken because I never risk giving it away. But what kind of impoverishment is this, to withhold emotion, to restrain our passionate nature in the face of a generous life just to appease our fears? A man or woman whose mind reigns in the heart when the body sings desperately for connection can only expect more isolation and greater ecological disease. Our lack of intimacy with each other is in direct proportion to our lack of intimacy with the land. We have taken our love inside and abandoned the wild. Is this unspoken hunger that can only be addressed and fed through the land, through our relationship to the earth, to something other?